All right, everyone, in this video, we are in for a treat because I have a brand new product from Pink Fresh Studios latest release, and I am doing a fun little Instagram hop with them over on Instagram. So I'm sharing what I'm gonna be creating here, but first and foremost, let's see what they sent over to me to create with. So we have so many goodies, and let me just warn you, it's gonna be add to cart day because they're so beautiful and we have coordinating stencils, which you know that just gets me every time. This is our first fun stamp set. I'm gonna flip, flip it over so that you can see what the little mock-up is. Isn't this gorgeous? I'll link everything below. And then I have the coordinating dies as well. And you can do this a variety of ways. So you can either stamp this out and use the coordinating stencils to get some color onto your image, and then you can use the coordinating dies as well, or you can use the washi tape, and I am so jazzed about this. I think this is the one that matches. Yes, this matches this set here. How gorgeous. So this completely takes away all of the busy work and all of the hard work. You're simply going to, and I'll show you how to do this because this is so fun and easy, but we're simply gonna roll this out on a piece of cardstock, or you could do vellum as well, and then it matches up perfectly with the coordinating dies. You use the dies to just cut it on out, and immediately you have some really great embellishments for your card. So again, two ways you can do it. Stamp and stencil and then cut it out, or place the washi on cardstock and cut it out. So. Create looks, this gives you more creative control if you wanted to bring in some different color. This gives you a quick and easy card. You really can't go wrong. So that's the first collection. And again, everything will be linked below if you fall in love with one of these, or in my case, with all of them. This is the second set. How beautiful is this? This is a rose set, it's gorgeous. And let me see, I think it's this one, which is really pretty because it's a little bit more rainbow which I love. So again, we have the stamps and we have the coordinating stencils that go with that. And we have the coordinating dies. Make it easy with the washi tape, instant color, and you've got a really fun card. And then the final one that I have, let me find the stamps. This is the beautiful stamp set. I didn't even show much of the sentiments, but you can rewind and kind of pause to see all of the pretty sentiments that are accompanying these sets, but this is the stamp set. Here's a little mock-up of what that will look like. And of course you have the stencils, the dies, and here is the coordinating, I believe this is the same one. Yes, this is the coordinating washi tape for that. So what I think we're going to do, these are all gorgeous, but I am going to just hop back over to that first set. Yes, let's do this set. And I'm gonna make two cards. That way you can see how you can do two cards, either again doing the stamp and stencil or doing the washi tape. So let's go ahead and start with the washi tape. It's so easy to do. So let me set these to the side. The washi tape card is going to take two things. You are going to do the washi tape and the coordinating dies to cut them out. Actually, I lied. You'll also use your um, stamps for the sentiment portion of it. Okay, so let's go ahead. I have already. This is a piece of 110 pound cardstock. You can use any type of cardstock that you wish. You can also use vellum, which also creates a really pretty look as well. I'm just going to cut into this so that we can open this up. Okay, so then let me just get a little starting point on this washi tape. All we're going to do is line this up on our card stock. So I'll line it up just like this. And let's see where actually, where's the starting and the stopping point? I actually think this is where the starting point is. So let me backtrack there for a second. Let's just snip that off. To me, that looks where it's like, like it's gonna naturally stop. Yes, okay, so I'm just kind of matching that up. Let me trim this off. And I can keep that piece for something else, but I want to kind of focus on everything that the die is going to line up with. So I'm going to lay down my washi and I'm gonna go just little by little. And you could also bring in a really soft little squeegee if you'd like to help lay that down. And whoops, 
I've got a little bubble, so I'm just going to backtrack just a little bit. I did not follow my own advice. I'm going <laughs> slow with that. And I'm just going to lightly, with that little squeegee, lay that down. Okay, and in order to cut that off nicely, I'm just gonna cut the cardstock as well. Okay, so I'll just go like this. Let's see, give myself enough room. Okay. And then I'll keep this little piece for, well, probably my sentiment. And then look, I mean, how many cards can you make from that? A million. I mean, well, don't take me literally there, but you can make a ton. I'm gonna flip this over and just kind of burnish the back. There we go. Okay, so now I can grab the coordinating die. Now you can kind of see how vibrant this is, right? And based on what cardstock you put under it, you could really change the tone. If you put it on something that's more colorful, then you're going to get a different look. And if you put it on, say, vellum, you might get something that's a little bit more soft in contrast. And I'm gonna grab everything but the sentiment dies and look at this. So now everything is automatically aligned, just like that. And I can simply secure this down with some tape, run it through, and in minutes, I have all of the embellishments for my card. So let me grab some additional washi tape. Just do this, secure this down. That looks good. Now you'll notice the length of the die. It's quite long. In fact, let me, if I zoom out a little bit, we can actually use just our mat. This is a little bit, let's let's say it's four by nine, okay? So you can either, if you have a smaller cutting machine, just run it through half at a time, which I'll probably just do. Um, I'm not sure about the spellbinder. It, if that has long enough plates, let's just check. Actually, it does. If you have the uh, new plate system, then you can run that through all at once. Oh, that just me messed it all up. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we can go ahead and use this new cutting system. Okay, I always have to think this through. So we have platform A, platform B, and of course we have our, oh, our cutting plate, the one that you cut into. So that will be the one that has all the marky marks on it. And then obviously our cardstock and our die, and then the next cutting plate. So you can see that that fits really well. We can just run it through once. Oh my word, it will not stay attached. It's probably because I am putting washi on washi. Okay, before that messes up again, I'm going to run that through and get it all cut out. We have, and they all cut out beautifully, we have all of our little pieces. Look how cute, well, that shifted a little bit, but it's gonna be just fine. I'm not worried a second about it. Look at all of these pieces. Isn't that wonderful? So easy. And again, you could just mass produce this so easily. Put all of your washi on all of your paper and then go with your die and just cut, 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 cut. So I love this. If you wanted to create just a bunch of cards for the year, maybe you want to do all of your birthday cards or let's see what the sentiments are like. You probably can do quite a variety of cards. Okay, I want to go bold here. And I'm contemplating whether I want to build up my card base or do a panel, but I know I wanna bring in a really, really pretty pink. So, actually I do think I want to, we'll do tone on tone. Let me get a card panel out of the same cardstock. Okay, well why don't we do this? I'm going to, first of all, make this A2 size. So we'll do four, oh, let's see, five and a half. Okay, because this is 11 inches, so let's trim that in half. Okay, now let's do, um, let's do five and a quarter by four. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, and then we have four by five and a quarter for our 
card panel. It's just going to be a tad smaller. And on my next card, I'll do a white card base. So we'll have two, we'll do an, something nice and bold and then we'll do something different. So what I'm thinking I'll do is kind of just bring in these pieces to frame out the sides. And I'm thinking we'll probably trim this in half. Let's trim this in half. Maybe something like that. Okay, that way we can do this and this. Ooh, that's pretty. And I need to remember to have room for my sentiment. So maybe bring in that. And let's pause and grab the stamps. Okay, so we have you are wonderful in every way, friendship or friends like you are a blessing, and a good life is a collection of happy moments. Oh. Okay, so I think I'm going to do let's just bring them in. Oh, and we have so happy to call you my friend, which is adorable as well. That tiny one. I forgot about that one. Okay, so I'm kind of thinking. How about a good life is a collection of happy moments? I also like, yeah, no, I like that one. So again, let's bring in the tape. Let's secure these pieces that I know I want to keep where they're at. Just like, in fact, I need to, well, I'll I need to trim down. There's just a little, bit there that I need that to go away. So I had it, oh goodness, okay. I had it like that. Put this here, okay. And I think that's gonna be kind of good because my sentiment is going to take up the rest of that area and I am going to I'm going to put that on with some embossing powder I think that'll be really pretty so I almost wonder if I should bring this one in though because it'll kind of come down a little bit more into that white space I don't know I actually really like that no I'm not gonna overthink that um, I don't want it to be too much and let's bring this little mini misty right on in, just like this. And I'm pretty sure I like where everything is. The only thing I wanna think about is just if that's straight or not, which it looks fine. So once I have the stamp positioned, I can go ahead and just remove all of these. Okay, whoops. <laughs> and let's go ahead and prep the paper with some anti-static powder. So I'm gonna place that just in the area where I'm going to do my embossing. Then with my Versamark, I can go ahead and just ink up that stamp. And place that right down. Okay. And I'll probably just do that twice. It's probably unnecessary, but might as well. Okay. Pretty. Let's go for a nice white embossing powder. Okay, bringing in a little catch paper here and a fine detail embossing powder in white. Let's just place that right over. And that looks great. Just put the remaining powder right back into the jar and we will melt the powder. I'm gonna make sure that my heat tool is really, really hot before I start melting my powder. Okay, there is our little embossed sentiment. I think that looks really good.
Let me just wipe off the cardstock so that I can remove the anti-static powder. And I'm just gonna use just this paper towel. Okay, and there we go. Let's make sure that our card base is nice and prepped. So I'm going to grab that initial piece of cardstock. This is 11 by five and a quarter. And I'll place that score line right at five and a half. And this will give me a top folding A2 card with the final dimensions of four by five and a quarter. And I'll just place that crease right at the top along that fold and we're good to go. All right, opening this up, I'm going to grab some foam tape because I want to, first of all, pop this up, whoops, off of my card base a little bit. But I also think that the foam tape is a great way to remedy the little bit of warping that you can get from, there we go, that's probably a bit easier to see, but get from doing the embossing pattern. Now, if you wanted to put this um, in a book or something like that, you absolutely can, but I am just going to use the foam tape because quick and easy. This just helps give it that nice structure and support that it originally had. And let's go ahead and remove the little backs. All right. Oh, you know though, um, hold on. I need to pause. Let's put these back on. If possible, I gotta put these back on because I knew where well, I know that the two, these two pieces are trimmed towards the edges, but I don't have that quite trimmed down. So I need to place that so that I can trim it off. Got a little ahead of myself, but let's get everything placed on the card here. Now, how did I have that? I had these pieces over here, and I'm going to use some foam squares to bump these up. These are awesome for building dimension. I'll just place these all over the back here. Cut a few in half just to fit the size of some of the areas. Okay, and last couple little places here. Here and there. Okay, so then we have this sitting. Oh, that's gonna be very nice. All right, let's go ahead and remove those little backs. So now I just wanna make sure I line that up just so. There we are. Okay, and I'll do the same thing for this. And let's make sure that I have the right one here. I really like that. I think that's pretty. I think that's going to be, and it, it hugs this sentiment so nicely. Again, you could bring this one in because it's gonna dip down more, but it's too crowded. And yeah, I think that one was a good, no, I'm not gonna overcrowd it. I think a little breathable space is refreshing. Okay, let's put this little one on. Okay, so now I know where I can trim this off and I am confident that I can do a straight line like that. So let me just take these scissors and snip. And there we go. Oh, I really like that. That's really pretty. And then of course I have these as extra, so I could make an entirely different card. And let's place that right on down. Pretty, okay. I'm gonna add a little bit of sparkle because I think it could stand just a little bit. And then this first card is done. Okay, Pink Fresh has these gold glitter drops that are just gorgeous. So what I think I will do is I'm going to do something like this just to kind of bring something into that space and then probably just down here. Okay, hug that sentiment just a little bit and let's flip these over so we can do one here, here, and here. Oh, that really brought it together. I really like that. And then we'll just do a little duo right down at the bottom, just like that. Oh, it finished it off very nicely. 
Okay, there is our first card. Look at the glitter on those little drops. They are so pretty. And the foil look on the pretty washi tape. That all around, I mean, it just, as you just move it around, it gets even more gorgeous. So I love how that turned out. I like the bold look of this. It's something that's a little bit out of my comfort zone, but when I saw this beautiful bold washi, again, you could tone it down a little bit if you wanted to put it on a vellum, but I knew that I wanted to do something that was a showstopper here. So here's our first card. Let's go ahead and move on to our second. Okay, so I think I'm just going to need a larger misty in order to stamp this out. So this should work. Let's let's see how we can do this. Yep, if you just grab, ooh, could you even, mm, just barely not. Okay, so it needs to go at a diagonal. So how do I do that with my cardstock though? Okay, what I'm gonna do here is just have a piece of cardstock that is six and a half by eight and a half. And then I'll have to put this over here, then I can grab a stamp and gently, I'm pulling the um, sheet away from the stamp, okay, all right, and then I'll just lay this just like that, okay, so I can close that door, clean that to the door. Okay, now let's reposition the paper because it did get shifted there a little bit. And I'm thinking what I want to do is do some heat embossing. So let's go ahead, ooh, prep this paper. And I think I'll do a gold emboss. I'll make this super pretty. Let's grab our Smart. Do that first impression. I am going to really press down on that. All right, let's check that out. I'm going to do one more time. Okay, I'll bring in some embossing powder. And this time I will do gold. Okay, and I'm gonna bring in some tweezers just to kind of hold this, or have somewhere, I guess, for me to hold it while I'm doing all of this. Okay, so I'm gonna put this kind of at an angle. And let's just see if I can, oh, there we go. I was gonna say, kind of just use some of the powder that falls to kind of catch on it. Okay. There we go. Oh, and you can see, oh, no, that actually just need to be tapped off. Oh, that looks really, really good. There's a couple spots I need to kind of remedy with a brush. But other than that, I think it turned out really good. Nice, okay. I have a tiny little makeup brush that I use to get little areas that have powder on them that I don't want powder on, so right there. And actually that looks really good. Okay, let's save the rest of this powder by just placing it right back in this jar. There we go. All right. Doesn't that turn out gorgeous? Oop, I think I see just one little dull area. I'm careful to, you know, really play with the light after I emboss so that I can see if there's anything that's not really shimmery and shiny. That way I can zap it with my heat tool. Okay, so now I'm going to just take some tape and secure this to my mat so then we can start stenciling. And we have a total of four stencils. So it looks like we have the big flowers. I kind of like to lay these out so I know what colors to pull. We have the big flowers. Then we have, I think this is flower details. Yeah. And then we have the leaves. 
and we have the little limbs and details to the leaves. I went with mint, meadow, coral reef, and peach fuzz. Usually is my go-to. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do most of my flowers in the peach fuzz. So once I have that pretty lined up, I can tape the stencil down and I'll just clean my little brushes off so that any of the previous ink colors I've used kind of rubs off. Okay, let's do peach fuzz for this first color. Bring that on in. And I am okay if this gets, you know, off to the sides. I'm not gonna mask off every area because I will just, I will just simply um, be trimming that off with the dye like you saw when we did the washi tape. Just trim it all down. Okay, so pretty. You can have ultimate creative control over if you want to do any type of shading or shadows. And I'll clean this stencil off in a little bit, but let's reveal this first layer. <laughs> Maybe. Ooh, very pretty. Okay, and then I think this next one that I'll do will be the coral reef. And then, ooh, this can be pretty. This is the coral reef, which is gorgeous. And I'm also bringing it into the details of my peach fuzz, and it's kind of making it look almost a little sunsetty, which I really like. And time will tell when we reveal this stencil, but I have a feeling this is going to be pretty neat. Okay. Okay, and being mindful, you know, that nature is just so unique. Oh, isn't that pretty? I really like that. Okay, and then we'll bring in our greens. And I need to kind of study these. I think I want this to be my mint color. Okay, I'm bringing that mint right on in. Gorgeous. And our final stencil, which is kind of more of the stems but also details to our green leaves. Okay, and I had rubbed off, I saw the second I did it too, I rubbed off that embossing powder, but not a big deal. That's what makes it a homemade card. Okay, so this is Meadow, and that is, last little one here, but that is the end of our stencils. And there we go. Now some of them I misaligned a little bit, but I did a video um, of a card where I had a little bit of an offset. And of course, if you were going to do it, you'd want to do it with all of your stencils, but that doesn't bother me too much. I actually really kind of like that look. So if you wanted to do an offset on your entire stencil collection, that would be super cool. So another way that you can kind of get creative with stenciling. Okay, oh, I really got that off, didn't I? <laughs> I really, really misaligned that. All right, so let's grab the die now, and what we're going to do is align it, but we're gonna to have to trim off the sides so we can fit this through the machine. So again, grabbing that same die that we used for the washi tape, it's all the same collection. Let's get that secured right into place. And I think two pieces is sufficient there. And then I'll just grab some scissors and trim down these sides. That way that fits right onto the cutting plate. And then off camera, I will just run this right through my spell binders, just like last time. Okay, and then some of them are coming out already, but there are the final little images. Man, oh man, I got that so misaligned. This is my wonky card. But actually, I am putting this on a white card base this time, so those details are, they're gonna be okay. Okay, so I have a card panel trimmed down here to four by five and a quarter. And this time, I think I want to just do some all over blooms. 
and let's see. And then I'm going to just plop my sentiment, I think, roughly in the middle of this card. So I want to do something like something like this. But then being mindful that when I, you know what I could do? I could put this on a really pretty peach card base and this could be so pretty. Okay, so I'm going to switch this out. I think it'll be really pretty, but I'm gonna use this as my guide. Let's go ahead and grab the foam squares once more. And I'm gonna go ahead and just do my thing, Jelly Bean. Same thing as last time. Oops, these don't wanna come off. Um, same thing as last time. We're just going to build up some dimension, have some fun here. Okay, there's that first one right there. Oh, that's so neat. In fact, um, this is four by five and a quarter. We could allow some of these to kind of fall or not, you know, not trim them down. That would be kind of neat. Of course, something like that you would. And then actually, should this go kind of like, yeah. See how that just kind of tucks in? Sometimes it's just a happy accident. Okay, I am going to trim all of these pieces off. Some of these actually have some sticky on them because, well, sometimes it's just hard to predict <laughs> where you're going to place it down. So let me go through and just trim off the edges. You could keep these little pieces and, you know, bring them in on other pieces of your card. I think I am going to, oh, that looks so good. Um, I'm not gonna bring anything more into this. I really like the spacing that I have. Okay, there we <laughs> go. Oh, I really like this one. I think card number two is my favorite. I love card number one, but I, you can just see my colors. My colors in this one are just, they're there. I do think though that I'm going to do a white card base. I just, I really like that. And I think that the outline of the white around the color kind of ties in with the outline of the white around the card. To me, it just is super pretty. So I'm gonna do that, but you could bring back that peach color and do a tone on tone like we did with that first card. Center that. Oh, I love the dimension on this. It's so pretty. Okay, let's talk about the sentiment. I like friends. Oh, friends like you are a blessing. And I'm, I'm gonna do you are wonderful in every way. I think that is beautiful as well. Okay, I've got some cardstock here. And I think this is 80 pound cardstock actually this time. Bring that a little bit in the middle or just away from the edge so that I can use my coordinating die to cut that out. And then I will do the gold embossing powder that I used earlier. So let's prep the paper, grab Versamark, and I will just double stamp this and add the gold embossing powder. Okay, this is gonna be pretty. I think this is going to take on the light, just gorgeous. And then I have some ideas for the embellishment. All right, let me go ahead and add the powder and melt it. You saw me do it before, so I won't go ahead and bore you the second time around. And then we'll cut that out. I went ahead and did my heat embossing and then I trimmed it out with the coordinating die. I also went ahead and cut two additional layers. That way I could add some easy dimension. You could use foam squares, but look at how intricate this is. I find that that's a little intimidating for me. And I really like paper on paper sometimes. I think that's just so pretty. And this is so easy, right? This is just the simple way to add dimension. I feel like those would be some very fine foam squares. <laughs> you could use foam strips, but that's still, I feel like they still don't make them that fine. Okay, I'm gonna grab a block just to make sure that that is nice and pressed down. And here we go. Okay, I'm in love with this card. I need to put a 
little support I must have missed on the back of this little one. So let me just fix that really quick because you can see it's just bending. Okay, there we go. Okay, much better. All right, so then I think what I'll do is place this here. Okay, so I will put a little foam. Let's see, where did that lie? Right about there, so here. And the rest will be glue. That way it just doesn't sink down. Okay, and then we'll do liquid glue everywhere else. like that. Okay, super pretty. I'll also, let's make sure that's straight, which, yep it is. Also place a little block right there. Okay, we have the same embellishments. Everything that I'm using will be linked down below, but what I was thinking we could do is, we could do a couple series of two But I thought we could, well, why don't we just do, why don't we just do that? Three little series of two. That work? Let's do it. Oh my gosh, it just, every time. I don't use these a lot, and the times that I do, they just look amazing. One of those things, have you been that way with craft supplies sometimes where you, Oh my goodness. Okay, flip on over. Um, you underappreciate certain things. I feel like this is one of those silent craft supplies that I am not appreciating as I should. Okay, that's really cute. Although I will, I think I will just add like an additional one, one, and one. Just, a little, just some individual ones. And they can just be the teeny tiny ones. Okay, and final one. Okay, I really like that. I think that's really pretty. Okay, two cards with the same collection, but using two different means to get there. And I think these are really fun. I like that they're both very different from one another, and that just shows you also the impact of color as well. So I hope that this was fun for you to watch. Please be sure to let me know which one was your favorite. Number two is my favorite only because I feel like it is just on brand with my whole vibe. So I absolutely love this, but I'm really loving this as well. So let me know which one was your favorite. Also hop on over to Instagram and see what other creators are doing with these beautiful collections. And I can't wait to continue crafting with you soon. See you in the next video.